Hey guys, Cockerpunk here. Uh, gonna link you to a vid here on TechPB where um, uh, Mike is doing the Super Gun Show for the Geo, which is cool. I like the Super Gun Shows. Uh, it's nice to actually see the gun do, especially the efficiency test. Uh, I always skip to that because uh, rarely do you see something like that, uh, and that's you know a relatively good test of just just doing them. Anyway, at the end of the efficiency test on the Geo. He does a speed test, uh, puts a Pinocchio on top of the Geo, and shoots it as fast as he can. Uh, it's in about the last five minutes, so you can skip to that if you're not interested in anything else about the Geo. Um, and so, uh, at the end of that, well, okay, he gets uh, a break. Paint breaks in the gun, not even a second or two into it. I'm pr it's, it's pretty early. Uh, it's been, I don't know, I watched it this morning, so I guess I don't remember it off the top of my head, but it's pretty soon he gets a break in the gun. And that, of course, gets more breaks in the gun. So the gun breaks quite a bit of paint through the video. Um, and it's only, you know, 400 rounds or something like that. Maybe a little over. Um, anyway, so the gun is breaking paint all over the place, uh, probably triggered by this first break. And, um... Mike says, well, when you're shooting that fast, uh, paintballs will actually collide in the barrel of the gun with each other. Oh, shoot. Oh, shoot. Girlfriend's going to call me in like five minutes. Damn. Okay. I'll go quickly. Um, so here's what we got. Uh, oh, shit. Ah, damn it. Anyway. Um, so here's what we got. He says that it's a... Uh, a, a mid-barrel collision, and uh, we'll take him at his word, and we'll take a look. I got a nice calculator here, uh, something up here, and uh, I did some math here. So what we got? All right, the formula we're going to be using throughout this video is distance over time equals velocity. I put s there for seconds. So we have feet per second. We multiply that by the amount of time we get feet, or the distance it travels. All right, so this is average velocity, average velocity. Now, here's where the, the math kind of gets yucky because in truth, we would need to do instantaneous velocity and then find the average of that, um, which happens to be a differential equation. And it's not very much fun to solve differential equations without a computer uh, to do it for you. And uh, it's not very fun to watch someone solve a differential equation, plus, it's kind of interesting to see how the whole relationship works uh, in the grand scheme of things, meaning test out a whole bunch of values and see what happens. Um, so average velocity, keep that in mind, because uh, in the barrel of your gun, in the amount of time, and actually it's governed by time, in the amount of time that we assign, we're talking about the average of the velocity. So, so the video there, Keep that in mind. I'll point it out again. The video, 19 balls per second, is what it was gold waved at, which means we have uh, 1 19th of a second per shot, which is uh, 0.0526 seconds, which is 52 milliseconds per shot. That means it takes, the, the time between one shot and the next is 52 milliseconds, right? That's how fast the gun is cycling with loader delay and with... Uh, the bolt movement and the dwell and all that jazz. So, what I did here is I picked a bunch of average speeds, right? And then I picked uh, a time, right? So what we're doing is I am picking arbitrarily a velocity and a time, and I'm gonna see how many feet the paintball travels. So. Uh, if you think your average velocity in one millisecond is a hundred feet per second, then you've gone a tenth of a foot, which is just over an inch. Um, so this goes all the way up to 350 feet per second, in which case we went about maybe a little over four inches, uh, which makes sense, um, in one millisecond. Now, I picked eight milliseconds here because... Uh, most guns have a dwell, in which case the solenoid is actually on during the cycle, um, of about 4 to 8 milliseconds. So I picked 8 milliseconds because it's a spool valve. I'm not really sure exactly what the dwell is on it, but it's somewhere in that area. So, if you assume that in that 
in that first 8 milliseconds, our average velocity is 100 feet per second, then we've g just gone almost a foot. We've gone 10 inches or so, right? 10 inches. That's how far it goes in just the solenoid on time at 100 feet per second average velocity. Okay? So now if we go to 300 feet per second average velocity, we have 2.4 feet. So in 8 milliseconds, if your average velocity is 300 feet per second, then you're going 2.5 feet. Now, the, the true average velocity can be different between guns um, because the acceleration takes place differently. Uh, needless to say, though, since the brunt of the acceleration happens very rapidly in a paintball gun, the average velocity is going to be very high. Zero is not going to affect the average as much as 300 is because it spends much more time near 300 feet per second in the barrel of a gun. So we could say 200 feet per second, we could say an average of uh, 200 or 250, even 150 feet per second. But you can see, in only the time the solenoid is on, we've traveled longer than the barrel, a lot longer than the barrel, way longer than the barrel of the gun. In only the time the solenoid is on. So already you can see that there's pretty much no way you can get a gun inconsistent enough to get balls to hit each other because your average speed would have to be all over the place. So here's what I did now, as I said, 52 milliseconds. This is, that's the true time between shots. So that is, this is going to be the distance the first ball travels before the second ball even starts moving, okay? So we start at 100 feet per second, which is pretty conservative five and a half feet. If we say our average is between 200 and 250 feet per second, which is about where I would think it is, 10 feet to 13 feet. That paintball is so far down range, so far down range, there's no way. It's not, it's not in the barrel, it is nowhere near the second paintball that is flying out of there. So, it's pretty clear that the paintballs didn't hit each other. Now, if we want to look and see, you know, how slow would that first shot have to be to get the second shot to hit it? Well, now we can look at uh, this. I went to 50 seconds, or, or 50 feet per second, 25, 10, 5, 1 feet per second. So now you can see at about 25 feet per second is about the length of the barrel. So maybe 20 feet per second would have to be your average speed in 52 milliseconds in the total cycle of the gun. 20 feet per second would have to be your average speed in order to get one paintball to hit the other paintball in the barrel of the gun. 20 feet per second, right? So that means that, yeah, that basically sums it up. Unless your gun's shooting plus or minus 280, um, well, probably more like 200. Plus or minus 200, we'll give you that much. Plus or minus 200 feet per second is about where you're going to have to be shooting, inconsistency-wise, to get one paintball to hit the next. So, I'm happy for myself because the message said my girlfriend was going to call me in five minutes, and she hasn't called yet, so, winner, okay? Uh, anyway, it's probably pretty clear that what's actually happening here is just a barrel break. It's just a barrel break, um, which makes perfect sense, I mean... Guns break paint. They just do. Uh, something doesn't work right, and they break paint. And, uh, yeah. But Mike, uh, Mike will say that that 693 uh, barrel is going to um, save you ba your barrel breaks. So I guess something else has to happen because it can't be a barrel break because it's a 693 barrel, right? Uh, right. Anyway, you guys ponder that one, and I'm going to talk to my girlfriend here. You guys have a good night.